for your sake and also for the sake of those who will watch this online. The lessons that were offered today are not in the daily office, either for morning prayer or for the Eucharist. They're actually the propers for confirmation. And that's the context and what we're, what we're doing today. We've got people to be confirmed and received, but we, we retain the collect, the opening prayer, which is consistent for all week. And I want you to notice the collect and Paul's epistle use the very same word. And the word is bondage. We first pray that God would set us free from the bondage of our sin. Bondage meaning slavery. We're asking God to do something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. We do not have the capacity to be able to take the chains off our wrists or off our ankles, as it were, and set ourselves free. And so the cry of this week is for God to do something that we cannot do for ourselves. Take us where we are, which are a people who literally live in chains, and to break the power of those chains, not to set us free to sort of do whatever we want, but to instead replace the chains with what the colic describes as the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son. In other words, the prayer is that God would break the shackles that continue to bind us to patterns of sin and death to which we are in slavery, break those and take us into a liberty that looks like Jesus. In other words, it's not a liberty that looks like the best Christian I know or the liberty of that person who lives in the highest level of self-determination, but rather it's in a liberty that looks like Jesus. It's what Paul describes when he talks about in Colossians, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It is the outworking of the spirit that Jesus placed in us, his spirit, that Paul says the very same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, which is for me is all but unfathomable. That God would pour that kind of life and that kind of power into our mortal frames. And yet that's what we're praying. Break the chains, set us free, bring us into a life that looks like Jesus. That's what we're praying. And what Paul does is that he uses the same word bondage, but he's talking about the condition of the created order, which includes you and me. And he describes it as a bondage to decay, meaning the inevitability of decay. Like, we're just getting older, and there's not a lot we can do about that. Or the bondage of decay that looks like pestilence, disease, death, ravaging the worst that we see in creation. There is an inevitability about that that has been sown into creation itself. And what Paul says is that even as we are being set free, the goal that God has in mind is to literally bring that same freedom to all of creation. So that what God is doing, and this is, I think is really important, is not just sort of doing a little work inside of you and me to make us better people. This is not a highly personalized, individualistic gift only. It is that the Spirit of God reaches into the deepest places of our souls. And, and Paul says that. I love this. This is actually one of my favorite pieces in all of Scripture. When Paul talks about the fact that there is by the presence of the Spirit of God, a groaning in us that's even deeper than what we can articulate. Too deep for words. And there are people, and it could be any of us, who actually come into such a place a profound pain and grief that they have no words. And what Paul is saying here is, even in that place, where, to use another analogy, we hit bottom and we have no words. 
Redemption is underneath where we hit bottom. And that God is at work in us, even though we cannot articulate it, even though it's bigger and more deep than anything that we can imagine. We think we will never, ever get out of a, such a profound sense of pain and loss, trauma, brokenness, that even in those deep, deep places, God is at work. That's what redemption is that God is at work weaving and using not only that as a part of the fabric of all that creation endures, that I am not alone in my trauma, but more importantly than that, that just as God is at work in redeeming creation, so he is also at work redeeming the deepest and darkest places that exist inside of me and inside of you. As Corey Ten Boom says, who was freed from a Nazi concentration camp and therefore knew horror and trauma like few of us will ever know, she said it this way, there is no pit that he, meaning Jesus, is not deeper still. There is no pit where he is not deeper still. And so what we're invited into as we say yes to Jesus Christ, is his work within us that is deeper than anything that we can imagine and that is a part of what God is doing literally in the cosmos, in the universe, working out redemption even in the deepest, in the worst places of pain. And that there is a liberty that we see in Jesus that God desires to work in us and in all of creation itself. And that's a liberty that has a sort of a sure-footedness to it that allows us to enter into even the deepest pain of human existence because we know, because this is what God is working in us, and we see it in Jesus, that death is not final. That even the worst that life has to offer, as it were, does not have the last word. And in fact, I would go so far as to say in the gospel lesson, to take up one's cross is to choose to live at cross purposes with the finality of death, with the inevitability of life only as we can see it with the naked eye. Because the, in an end, in the end, this liberty that we are praying for actually imparts to us a different way of seeing. It gives us the capacity to be able to see God at work when hardly anyone else can. It gives us the capacity to see the seeds and presence of hope, even in the worst places of trauma. It gives us the capacity to see life from a very different perspective, from what we see if all we know is that which we can see, touch, taste, and feel. It sets us on a different course. And on a course that is, in fact, at cross purposes with a lot of what we know about life and what people tell us about life, which is why this is a difficult life. That's why Jesus says, take up your cross. He who would save his life would lose it. He who would lose his life for my sake will find it. It's because we have chosen by the mercy of God, the work of his grace inside of us, to live on the outer edge of hope, even in the midst of the worst of circumstances, and have the capacity, even with the most traumatized individual, to be able to stand beside them and not be afraid, but to actually be kind, to be hopeful, and not in any kind of Pollyanna sort of way but hopeful because we know that on the other side of death there is resurrection. Because that's what we see in Jesus. That is the liberty of that abundant life. So those of you who today are saying, when I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? And you say, I renounce them. What you're doing is that you're not saying they don't exist when you say, I renounce them. Instead, what you're saying, oh, I know they do exist, but they do not have the last word. They are not the supreme authority. 
They are the ones that do not determine the course of my life. Jesus does. I live on a, on a different plane, not from them, even beside them, but focus knowing that I'm going, I'm going to heaven. And I'm a part of a foretaste of that kingdom even now. And that I can stand in those places of deep darkness, drenched in the presence of God. And therefore, I don't have to be afraid. In other words, those powers do not have sway over me. So, beloved, what I want to say is that when you're saying yes to this, it's like, come on, step up. You're living under a different direction. You will be misunderstood because you are living at cross purposes with much of how the rest of the world defines itself. You will have to face the places inside of you where you've defined yourself less than what the scripture says about you. You will need to learn to see yourself as well as this world differently. And in accordance with what Jesus says about what it means to be human, what life is like, and what it means to be a redeemed child of God. But it is, in fact, the signs of the liberty that God is working within us. It pours in us courage that we could never imagine. It gives us a level of determination that can be astonishing. Even the courage to sit and weep with those who weep and not be afraid of their pain. Or even be afraid of the pain that is in us. But to know regardless of where we go, we still are in the light of his resurrection. Set us free from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son. That's what God is doing. And it is that to which we say yes. Amen.